Hey folks, welcome back. This teaching is going to be specifically dealing with the weekly bias, excellence, and short-term trading. Okay, the weekly bias and short-term trading. Points of focus in this module will be mapping bullish weekly profiles, when to anticipate weekly lows to form, and mapping bearish weekly profiles, when to anticipate weekly highs to form. Okay, so the weekly smart money view. As you can see here, this is a chart depicting one week's worth of trading. And I want you to take a look at how the market gyrates from day to day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And this would be in a bullish scenario. Okay, this is for bullish conditions. What we're looking for is the weekly low to form between Sunday's opening and Wednesday. There are high odds for the weekly low to form before Wednesday's New York Open, or what would be otherwise 7 a.m. New York time. The odds further increase between Tuesday and Wednesday, focusing on Tuesday's London to Wednesday's New York Open. So let's flesh out some more ideas about this. What you're going to be looking for is a higher time frame directional bias. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. And I teach those in the mentorship. But if you like looking at higher time frame charts like monthly and weekly charts, they will aid you and assist you in determining that. But this is a hourly and or 30 minute time frame viewing the weekly perspective. So that way you can see the entire daily range over the spectrum of the entire Sunday's open to Friday's close. What we want to be focusing on is the opening price on Sunday. Now, some of you may not have a Sunday candle in your platform, and that's fine. It's still beneficial for you to seek out whatever the Sunday opening price is. So you can use things like websites that follow the foreign exchange markets and get an opening price because sometimes those opening prices will create gaps from Friday's close. Those gaps are very indicative of sentiment, and sometimes they could be exhaustive or they could be insightful in the form that it's showing underlying strength. If it gaps up, it may not fill. It may not trade back down and fill that gap and then trade higher. It may just straight, straight away you know, go north right from the higher opening on Sunday's open. What we're looking for is on Sunday's opening, we want to see that opening price and extend it all the way to Friday, keeping that in mind. And I'll explain why that's important in a couple minutes. But what we're primarily looking for is a power of three formation on the weekly range. But from a 30 minute chart, which is what we're showing here, this is gonna give us the intraday reference points and it'll show you how the market moves and gyrates with this in. Now, if you choose not to use Sunday's data, which I think is a little myopic when we're at least talking about the relationships of the opening price for the weekly range, because you have to understand that that still is there in terms of trading, just because your platform may or may not have a Sunday's candle. The market did, in fact, open many times hours before you would expect it to have shown price on your Monday candle. So it's beneficial for you to go through and research and find out what the opening price is on your respective Forex pair. That's what you're using. You can elect to go with the opening price on Monday's trading, but your data is going to be slightly skewed. Okay, so whatever your first opening price is on Monday, you can use that price and draw that across. Okay, but if it's an instance where the market starts at a lower uh, price level on Sunday, we may not get the opportunity on Monday's opening price to dip down below it when we're bullish or want to be a buyer at the opening price or below it. Okay. So I use the Sunday's opening price to teach new traders because it teaches them number one sentiment. It teaches them overbought, oversold without the use of indicators. 
Okay. And it also teaches you to trust the higher time frame premise. What's the monthly and the weekly charts suggesting? Are they implying that we're going to be moving higher or are we moving lower? Uh, this example here is going to be framed on the basis that we elected by a way of analysis that the higher time frame charts are looking for higher prices. So that means price is going to expand on the open on Sunday or shortly thereafter and having a higher close or at least expanding throughout the week to make a higher price level where we can hopefully find an opportunity to harvest some pips. In terms of power three, what we're seeing here is the relationship day by day and what price has done with that opening price. But in terms of a weekly range, if you're a short term trader, you can use this insight and not have to worry about day trading at all. Once you know the opening price, you're going to be anticipating that move down below the opening price. Now, what level you choose to buy it down there, there's lots of different ways you can do it. And I teach a lot of them. And it's not important for me to share with you any one particular setup because I've learned over the years teaching that some of my concepts don't always gel or more or less work for certain individuals. It's not because the patterns are they're not you know favorable in terms of how to use them in the price action. It's because of personality. It, I'll give you an example. Uh, to be a buyer when the market creates a new low, that is sometimes scary for certain traders and they won't want to do that. Other traders that see that and they say, well, it makes perfect sense. They will gravitate towards that type of pattern. The ones that don't want to be buying below old lows, that trader will probably do very well when they do optimal trade entry buys where it's proven it's gone up a little bit and then it retraces. It makes more sense for them to do that. So that's why in the free content, I'm avoiding that whole way of teaching because it gives the impression to the students or the first time readers or viewers of my content that I'm trying to promote you to follow a specific mold. Okay. Or, or press you into a specific mold, which as a teacher and a trader, I know that that doesn't work. It can't work. Okay. It might work for some of you, but I don't want to make my success as a mentor be based on just a handful of my students. I have a way of teaching where the content is there for you to plug and play for your own personality. And I do a lot of that stuff in the mentorship, but for free content, this is all you need to work with and you'll find all the setups you'll ever look for. Now we can fine tune this principle and actually give you specific levels on what you would be buying at below the opening price, both in a day traders perspective and or a short term trader. So as a short term trader, if you've watched my content and you've been well impressed with the ability to have that precise of an understanding, you can still use these same concepts by way of using the opening price and trading the weekly candle. So the weekly range or weekly candle, they're synonymous terms. Okay. But I use them inter interchangeably, but for the sake of weekly range, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So what we're forming here is this particular week's entire data from the low of the week to the high of the week. This opening price is representative of the Sunday's opening price. We would be already, bullish on the week. We would anticipate this movement from the open and down. We would not be interested in anything from the open to trade up first. We would look at that as not interesting. We would wait for it to drop down into an oversold condition. What makes it oversold? Because its opening price is value. Okay. That's fair value at the time of new trading. At some point in the future, we would anticipate the market dropping down. Okay, that drop down from the opening price is going to make price in terms of overbought or oversold, oversold because the context or premise behind it, we would already be bullish relative to the monthly and weekly chart. So if we're expecting the weekly chart to continue higher, the new week, we would expect to see the opening price, the drop down, which is a Judas swing. This engineered move is to knock individuals that are already out long or drive individuals that are not in the marketplace that want to sell short to entice them to do so. Any pending orders that would sell in a breakout, they would be filled down on this movement here. So you as a short-term trader 
you could elect to buy at one of these levels below the opening price that my tutorials teach some of, but we go into great detail with that in the mentorship. So you can frame all types of uh, you know, entry techniques and concepts. They reside below the opening price. Okay. The way we use this information from the free tutorial standpoint is if we know that the low of the week from the opening price on Sunday, making the low of the week on this weekly range, it's going to form between Sunday's opening and Wednesday's New York open. The odds favor a greater chance of the low forming when you're bullish between the London setup and the New York setup of Wednesday. So Tuesday's London setup to Wednesday's New York setup. Between those two time periods, I'm going to encourage you to go through your charts. It's really, really easy to go through hindsight data, and you'll see what I just told you is like the elephant in the room. Retail traders, until I taught this stuff publicly on my YouTube channel and in my tutorials, nobody was talking about this. Nobody was mentioning it. No one was using it. And the folks that tried to say they were always aware of it, they showed examples in their trades, and it never was there. They were doing the things that were opposite to what this teaching teaches. I've been doing this for two decades, okay, and only a few handful of uh, individuals around the world had opportunity to learn from me, you know, could be about 18 years ago or so, and that small little circle of individuals, they and myself have the only ones that have been really been aware of this type of phenomenon. Now, since I made my tutorials, there's been educators and such, they've linked on to what I teach and they rename it. Okay, they call it a weekly strategy. Uh, they call it, uh, you know, whatever else they want to come up with, and they add some kind of a twist in the title. But once you see what they're doing, it's what I've taught here and what I've taught in my uh, previous teaching how to capture explosive price moves, which is a free tutorial. Which I didn't like the presentation, but if you watch that video or, or look at it, the first couple uh, minutes of that video is actually what I'm showing you here. So once that was produced and shared on Baby Pips and that crowd watched it all there too, um, it, it caught fire. Problem is, is most traders, they don't know what to do with it below the opening price when we're bullish. So which level do you buy? In this instance, I'm just going to teach the classic market structure, bullish optimal trade entry. Okay. So you're going to anticipate Tuesday to Wednesday's low forming. Now, sometimes it's going to form on Monday, but you can still get a continuation move on Tuesday or Wednesday. But primarily, I want you to be thinking how Tuesday to Wednesday in that time period, that's when the weekly low is going to form. Many times, it's going to be Tuesday's London Open. Okay. Now, if that's going over your head, I want you to stop and think about what I just told you. The weekly low most likely forms on Tuesday's London Open when we're bullish. If we are bullish and it does not form on Tuesday and we drop down on Wednesday, Wednesday will probably be the low of the week. If we go lower than the low formed on Wednesday's New York Open, you have to nix the trade and go to the sidelines on the day, especially if you took an opportunity on Tuesday or Wednesday and they were losing trades, you have to stop and just submit to the fact that you're wrong, even if Thursday or Friday it goes higher. And that's a very hard lesson to learn because you are bullish on the week, but you get stopped out and it still ends up going there and you missed out on it. That's going to happen. It's happened to me many, many times and it does not undo the effectiveness or the, the validity behind the setup. There's going to be an imperfection in your trading. So you have to permit that. Okay. But if we're looking for the low to form on Tuesday or Wednesday, what we're simply looking for is a new low in the week, preferably on Tuesday's London Open or Wednesday's New York Open, okay, between these two reference points. Should that occur, okay, as soon as we have a lower low in the week formed, we find the short-term high prior to that new low forming. In this case, it's this here, okay? So when that occurs, that's our trigger point. So for individuals that want to buy on retracements with optimal trade entry, we're going to wait for price to break above this short-term high, which it does here. From this point here, you're going to be looking for the low, the form, prior to this run-up. 
Now, classic FIB people will go from this low to this high. Sometimes that'll work, sometimes it won't. What I want you to look at is we have the most dynamic price movement off of this low. So you're going to anchor your FIB on the lowest close or open in that swing low. Drag it all the way up to this body here. Now, I don't have that in here because I want the, the presentation to be clean because my watermark on top of the chart and my references that I'm showing you here. I want you to go through and look at this for yourself. Go through your own data. The uh, November 21st and 22nd of 2017. Use a 30 minute chart and you'll be able to see pulling that FIB from that low to this high. You get an optimal trade entry beautifully lined up right there. And there's your continuation buy. And here's the thing you're buying it below the weekly open on Sunday. You're buying below that weekly open, trying to do power three on the week. This gives us the best advantage, okay, to be in before the expansion that takes place on the weekly range because we're buying below a valuation that would deemed as fair and then it drops down to an oversold condition. So while everyone else would look at these movements dropping down here and dropping down here as momentum on the downside, our perspective is like of the smart money. We're looking at that as it going down to an area of a really, really cheap price. So if you're terribly afraid to, you know, to, to step in there right when it breaks below to a new low, I understand that. But over time, you're going to have to you know, encounter that and just move past it or just elect to go with optimal trade entry as your, your pattern. And there's certainly nothing wrong with it. But if you're wanting to buy up here, and you're always going to wrestle with the idea, I wish I would have bought down there. This is only going to occur if you buy at new lows at a time when it should be creating the low of the week. And like I said, it's hard to do that without just getting in there and desensitizing yourself by practicing, practicing in a demo account and doing it live with a demo over and over and over again to the point where you just don't care if the outcome is going to be profitable or not because that's what it takes to be consistent. You're not worrying about the end result. You just trust the process of what you're doing. Eventually, over time, the sample sizes are more weighted on the positive side of what you're expecting to see than that of the temporary and sometimes, you know, unwanted negative results. That is missing the trade or getting stopped out. So this would be the optimal trade entry here. And again, it's on a day that we would look for it to form on Wednesday. And price starts to expand. We get about above the opening price. Preferably, we want to see price show a willingness to want to expand away from that opening price and not want to come back down to it. Now, there are some certain caveats to this, and I'll add this to you just to give you a little bit more spice on this. If we make the low of the week on Monday, how do we know that? It trades back above the opening price okay, on Monday and expands a little bit more. Okay, This right here, we dropped down, we went back above the opening price. I don't trust this because it's Monday and I like to see the Monday's range. Okay. I want to see what the Monday's entire daily range is. So I don't, I don't get the weekly lows many times. Actually, I'll just be fair about it. About 98% of the time, if the week makes its low on Monday, I'm missing that because I elect to sit many times on the sidelines because I want to use the range of Monday to give me insights. So on Tuesday, I like to get hopefully a lower low when I'm bullish. And then I'll buy in here, okay, based on some pattern or some kind of a key level I teach. And then I'll ride that out and hopefully get back above the opening price. Now, if we trade above the opening price on, say, Tuesday, I will permit Wednesday to see a retracement back down to the opening price, find some support, and then rally back away. On Wednesday, if we're breaking above the opening price on Wednesday, it cannot and it should not come back to the opening price. Now, Again, in simple terms, Wednesday is the line in the sand. If it trades above the opening price when we're bullish, we do not permit it to come back down to the opening price. It, it can happen if we go above the opening price on a new low on Tuesday, we can still see it come back down and retest that opening price on Wednesday. The algorithm will want to expand away from this opening price after Wednesday because it only has New York opens time period to Friday's close. 
And that's why you see this acceleration in the movement on the weekly range immediately after Wednesday breaks above the opening price. Now, you're going to look at this, and I'm going to be criticized by folks that don't like what I'm teaching because they're you know sold on indicators or whatever else they're doing, or they don't like the fact that I'm right. They're going to say this is being cherry-picked in a hindsight capacity. Well, granted, I am hand-picking this in hindsight to show you because it's already happened. Anyone teaching you anything is going to be some level of hindsight. I'm telling you to go through your charts, and you will see this yourself. As many as examples as you're going to find, you're going to see quickly what I'm telling you is the gospel. Okay, It's just the way it is. You can argue and wrestle with this, but if you trade against this premise, you're, now you're going to understand why you're losing money. Okay, So once we get through the opening price on Wednesday and in, or on Tuesday or Monday, Monday, I personally will never get the low on Monday of the, you know, the weekly low. I won't get that on Monday. You can try to test that theory and buy down here and you might get something like this and this could have kept on going. If you're going to trade on Monday, if it trades back to the opening price, my opinion is, is to take some profits there and leave a, a stop in so that way, if it does knock you out, it protects any open profits, but leave it in there because you might have caught the tiger by the tail. Statistically studying all the possible scenarios and weekly profiles that I teach, I elect to just simply wait till Tuesday. And that's just the way I do it. Um, obviously, I'm not encouraging you to follow me lock step by step, but I'm doing it and telling you this because I want to be open about how I do it. Tuesday, I'm really actively looking at London Open. Okay, that's really what I'm looking for. So between London Open on Tuesday and Sunday's opening, I'm really not doing much at all. I'm just relaxing and spending family time. I'll glance at the charts, but I'm not really trying to actively pursue anything until around London Open on Tuesday. And if you look at the weekly ranges on the foreign currency pairs, you'll see that many times when we are in Indeed, bullish or bearish, uh, these turning points will form on Tuesdays on an open. But for this example here, we're bullish and we're looking at the opening price on Sunday. We want to see it drop down. It trades down to a level. We wait for it to break a swing high. Okay, and this could have easily formed on Monday. And the retracement could have been occurring on Tuesday, like it is here on Wednesday. And then Tuesday could have traded through the opening price. And we could still permit it to come back down to that Wednesday retest of the weekly open. But after that, it's not allowed to do it again. If it ever starts to gravitate back down to that opening price after Wednesday, trading through it, it's probably made a reversal or it's going to consolidate for the rest of the week. Either one's not good for a weekly expansion. Now, there's going to be times where we'll trade above the opening price on the weekly range and not go very far and just gravitate right back to the opening price. And it's going to be a quiet, mixed week. If it's still bullish the following week, we would still use the same criteria. Okay, but the next stage would be we would be expecting that expansion here. Now, this portion of the weekly range is going to be what you're holding for and eventually until Friday's close. Your mindset should be not trying to find 10 pips or give me 20 pips. Okay, I start my week off looking for scenarios that get me in down below the opening price because I understand that below the opening price is the ideal entry point for all my day trades and my short-term trading. As a short-term to swing trader, you can use that insight using the weekly ranges and not require yourself to be anywhere near an hourly or four-hour chart or anything less than that. So there's no reason for folks that watch my, my, my videos and they'll say, well, you know, I'm not a day trader. I can't use this information. It's interesting ICT, but I just, I can't do that. You have no excuse because I just gave you a bazooka <laughs> okay i just gave you the ability to go in there and short term or swing trade using the opening price on sunday okay wait for it to drop down and simply go in there and, and handle it now i will toss this out there and you guys can test this theory on your own okay if at any time you are bullish on the weekly range if the opening price and we drop down say 30 pips okay if we drop 30 pips from the opening price on sunday Test this theory out. If you're bullish, buy 30 pips below the opening price on Sunday and use a 150 pip stop. And this is for swing traders, not short term traders. Okay. And let that go and see if you don't get 150 to 300 pips. Test that theory and give me your feedback through Twitter. 
You can try this on any pair, really any kind of market, really. But uh, for Forex, I'm going to give you that suggestion. Now, it does not mean that you won't see it drop down sometimes 50 to 75 pips, okay? But generally, your stop loss of 150 pips after buying below the opening by 30 pips, what you're really doing is you're saying, I don't believe it's going to go down 180 pips from the opening price. If it's truly bullish, it won't spend a whole lot of time below the opening price, and it won't go that far down below it. Unless we are changing long-term in a reversal from a bearish market to a bullish market, then we could see some really wild uh, reaches below the opening price, which I don't look for those anyway. I want to be looking in a marketplace that's already in position to be moving. It has been moving for a while, longer term, and I'm just getting in, positioning myself in a logical area where the next upside is clearly an expansion or bullish up close for Friday. Okay, the weekly smart money view for bearish conditions. Okay, you can see here we have the same thing just reversed. We're looking for the weekly high to form between Sunday and Wednesday. High odds between Wednesday's New York Open, 7 a.m. from Sunday's opening, that's what we're looking for. But the odds further increase again between Tuesday's and Wednesday's trading, specifically focusing on Tuesday's London Open to Wednesday's New York Open. Okay, so we're looking at the weekly range here for this particular currency. This happens to be the dollar CAD. And you can see how price did in fact have a up movement on Monday, and then we had another movement up on Tuesday, creating the high of the week during the London session or what we were looking for for the scenario overall. We anticipate a bearish week ahead of the open. Once that opening price is derived on Sunday, we extend that through the entire week until Friday's close. Movements above the opening price, we anticipate that. We want to see price go to a level that would push price into a technically overbought condition. There is no overbought indicator on my chart. I'm reading price action. The fact that we're trading above the opening price in a market environment that's bearish longer term, that's what frames my idea over overbought. High of the week forms on Tuesday. Wednesday, we barely have any type of movement whatsoever. We still have a little blip on the radar as price runs back above that opening price and then quickly rejects. Notice that once it leaves that opening price on Wednesday, it doesn't try to go back to it. Now, it does retrace here, but it's not getting close to it. If it does, it's going to be a, a mixed week. We don't want to be a part of that. Okay? And then ultimately, price comes down, fails at this old low, and then we see a reversal. That's outside the scope or the focus. The point we're looking for is we want to be, when we're bearish, we're looking to sell short on or at very close to the weekly high. And riding that down to some measure of expansion below the weekly opening price. So in terms of the weekly range or weekly candle, what we're looking at is the opening price here. Then we're seeing the Judas swing. This is the portion of price action that we're anticipating. We anticipate this type of price action and we want to have a level in mind before it starts to even trade up where we're wanting to sell short. In this example, a real good example would be we have a high here and a Monday's high. So we have relatively equal highs. Price stabs above this. You could be a seller here. And I did, in fact, take this trade and I shared it on Twitter. You guys can see that. Go through my Twitter feed. Look at the date for uh, around November 21st, 22nd. I would have shown the example and I my entry points and everything's in there. Sell short with the expectation that there's going to be a sell-off. On the dollar CAD, price sells off, goes below the opening price. Now, remember what I said. As long as it is before Wednesday's New York Open, it's permissible to see price trade back to, in this case, above the opening price. Because on Wednesday, that's when it should leave the gate. Once it starts leaving that opening price, it's going to expand to reach for some measure of price action that creates 
the movement below the opening price. So the range expansion portion of the weekly range, that's what you're holding for. But you want to be positioned up here while price is going up when it's long term bearish. It feels scary. It feels odd. It feels out of place because you're watching price shoot up like this. And every retail minded trader out there and every person that's on Twitter and <laughs> Facebook, they're going to be looking at this thing saying it's going to the moon. And it's not. It's a southbound train. Once this thing leaves the station, which is the opening price on Wednesday's New York Open, draw that line on your chart. Once that occurs, it should always try to expand away from the opening price. You should have a predetermined level where you're going to be getting out at inside of this expansion. Okay. In this case, we have relatively equal lows here. We have a low here. We have a low here. So if we go about 10 to 20 pips below that, that would give us around 26.95. And that's 26.95 right here. And that gets us to this price point here. It goes a little bit lower, but then ultimately comes back with a deep retracement and then closes into the week, giving us the weekly candle or range profile like this. The ideal scenario is to look for a sell above that opening price. As a day trader, you could be focusing in on that and or as a short term trader or swing trader, you can use the weekly candle or weekly range to trade entirely off of that and not even look at an intraday chart, not even a daily chart. You can take these types of trades and again, look for that same scenario. Wait for it to trade about 30 pips above the opening price. Okay, in this case here, we opened around here. We can go up 10, 20, 30 pips. So you could be a seller around uh, 28.05 and a stop loss of 150 points or pips. Okay, and then try to get 150 to 300 pips profit from that. By selling at uh, 128.05 or thereabouts, price goes all the way down to a low of approximately 26.75. I gave you this example to see and show you how even using the objective of 150 pips to 300 pips, you may not get that actually in your profit, which is why I teach to take partial profits. So if we sold short hypothetically at 128.05 or whatever 30 pips would be above that opening price, if we sold there with the expectation that we're going to try to capture 150 pips or more, as soon as you made 100 pips, why wouldn't you want to bank there, seeing that we're probably only going to make about 130 pips on this move? 100 pip movement, anytime your moves ever trade at 100 pip intervals, you have to take something off. Learn to do that. If you do not do that, I promise you, you will look back and regret not having done so. So as a day trader, you know, obviously, if it moves 100 pips, you certainly want to be banking 80% of your position. And if you're a short-term trader, you want to be at least half your position out because the weekly can change gears midweek. For instance, it could have went down to this low here and then trade all the way back up and taken out the Tuesday high. Those occurrences can happen. So if it's offered up 100 pips, take something off at 100 pips. Regardless of what style or what type of interval of trader you are, if it gives you 100 pips, pay yourself on those 100 pips. Even if it's one tenth of your position overall do it because it number one it'll feel good to do so it'll pay you for your time and the risk that you put in and it teaches you the value of doing it over time the folks that say that partial profits are, are stupid they're idiotic you shouldn't do it because the full risk was what it was at the beginning the risk is going to change preferably it's going to reduce over the life of the trade anyway but that same initial risk does not guarantee full profit. The, the assumptions that you, just because you put a specific number of uh, risk percentage on at the beginning of the trade, and it's stupid to take partial profits because you risk this much, but you don't. How many times have your trades gone to full profit? How many times have you failed to take something off if you just would have taken something before it turned back on you? That's what I'm I've been doing it for 25 years, folks. Okay, 25 years, it, I've seen enough of this to know partial pays. Okay. It pays. You have to give yourself the ability to take something out because the market is not going to do it for you. You have to take it out. So if you're going to be a short term or swing trader and you want to use the weekly range like this, if we expand a hundred pips, we're looking for 150 to 300 pips for the week. You're not always going to get 300 pips. 
but preferably if we're bearish in this case, we want to see hopefully a big weekly range. Remember that small range, big range phenomenon? Well, if we're starting to see small weekly ranges right ahead of this and we're still bearish, if we get this scenario here, we can do very, very well. You can see those big 300, sometimes even 500 pip ranges on a weekly, especially if it's going to be a lot of news, a lot of things that are happening, um, you know, economic calendar. It can be extremely volatile and it creates a large range on the weekly. So the model is we look for, if you're a short term swing trader that can't be in the intraday stuff, you can sell short above the opening price about 30 pips. Now you can fancy dance that. You can say, well, I'm going to be a seller at 40 pips above the opening price, or I can, if it trades up 50 pips above the opening price, I could be a seller there. Okay. And then look for 150 pips to 300 pips. Again, with the expectation that you're not always going to get 300 pips, but if it allows you to make a hundred pips, when you take your first partial off and then put your stop at break even, you're in a beautiful position because if you take, say, half your position off at a hundred pips, put your stop at break even, and then see if it gives you any more movement for the rest of the week. Once the examples come by looking at hindsight data and seeing what's available, you will quickly see whether this is for you or not. I'm not trying to twist your arm. I'm just giving those individuals that don't have the ability to sit in here every single day watching intraday price action a way to use this information on a higher time frame and allow them to participate. Now, if you are able to look at the market Tuesday or Wednesday, and you only have to do it on those days, around Tuesdays, London Open and Wednesday's London Open. If you watch those specific time points, you can look at specific levels in price action that I teach in my tutorials and go into great detail with the mentorship. You can sell at a more favorable entry point and you won't have to just say, okay, well, here's the opening price on Sunday. I'm going to take a set number of pips above the opening price all the time and sell short there when I'm bearish. You can avoid that. Okay, and you, you can say, okay, well, at the opening here, okay, I'm going to watch and see what Monday does. Monday's dilly dallying around, creates a Monday high here, and we start trading here. We start to drop down ahead of London. We're not interested in that. We're looking for this high and this high here, double tops. Okay, what's going to be resting above that? Buy stops. So if you know that going ahead of Tuesday's London Open, you could just simply do a sell limit order right above the high on Friday or a high on Monday. And then you can really reduce the amount of exposure you have and then still have that same 150 pip profit objective. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. If you like these lessons and you want to find out more, you can visit my website at theinnercircletrader.com.